guys, Amoeba reopened. Hello, Internet. This is Olin from What I'm Listening To. Hope you all are continuing to stay safe, stay healthy, keeping those hands nice and clean, and you are still continuing to wear that mask when you go outside. It is an exciting day today, guys. Today is the day that Amoeba San Francisco has finally reopened. Naturally, I was one of the many folks in line before the shop even opened. I was so excited. I had a bunch of stuff to sell and I got in there, got a bunch of credit from the stuff I sold and I have it all in this bag here. I'm so excited to be able to talk about the things I bought from Amoeba. I've got a lot of stuff here. Uh, this could be a long vlog, but I'm going to try to get through all this as quickly as possible just to make it easy for me to edit. But with all that being said, let's dive into the things I bought today. So starting with the receipt here, I had $104 from the credit I got from the stuff I sold. And minus that from my total, I only spent about $5.59 out of pocket, which was amazing considering I have so much stuff here. So the first CD I have here, uh, I have Donovan's Hurdy Gurdy Man. The Hurdy Gurdy Man is one of my favorite 60s songs, probably my favorite Donovan song of all time. I first heard it from the movie Zodiac, which it plays throughout the movie. It's an amazing, amazing touch to it. Do you want me to tell him to leave? Stay in the car. I technically own this album already, but this particular edition is a remastered version, and not only that, it has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bonus tracks. I saw this edition and I thought, may as well just replace my old edition with this. I'm sure the remaster will sound good, and it's got a ton of extra content on it, so happy to have this version. Next up in the bag here, I have a Jandek record, one of his many. This one's called Somebody in the Snow. I honestly haven't listened to this specific album. He's got so much work, a lot of which I haven't listened to. But I bought this CD specifically because, well, partly because I like the title Somebody in the Snow. It sounds just very creepy and spooky. But I also had discovered this huge Jandek flowchart that kind of broke down what albums to start with, where to go next from there, and all that. And this album had a little border around it saying it was an essential to listen to. At Amoeba, there's a lot of Jandek records in their experimental section, and they're a dime a dozen. This one was only $4.99, so uh, happy I found a copy of it. I can add it to my ever-growing collection of Jandek CDs. Who knows, maybe there'll come a point in time where I will own all of them, but that will take a long time to do. <laughs> Next up in the bag, I have, I have the Black Keys El Camino. Yet another CD I technically own, but the version I own is actually the promo edition. So it comes in this simple little cardboard sleeve. There's no booklet or anything. It's just the front cover here and then a basic track list and that's it. I only got that because I wanted the album and it was only a buck for the promo edition. Uh, this is the real official release and it was only $4.99, so I grabbed it. I was actually pretty late to getting into the Black Keys. The first album of theirs I heard was Brothers and then this one actually came right after Brothers, so I heard the song Lonely Boy and Dead and Gone and I was immediately hooked. It's just great fun garage rock blues rock material and of course danger mouse is involved with it so you know he's gonna do an excellent job with the production so yeah i am replacing my promo edition with the official release complete with all the stuff all the pictures of the cars a booklet oh god it's fell out a booklet with lyrics and more pictures of cars yeah this is exciting <laughs> Next up 
from the bag here. Oh, I have a very obscure hip-hop record by a group called Life Seeker. Anyone who played the video game Dead Rising may recognize this. Their song Gong Guru got featured in one of the boss battle themes. I actually own the digital version of this album. Basically bought it because of that one song, but I wanted to hear the rest of the album. And surprisingly, it's pretty good. It's kind of weird sounding. It can be a little experimental at times, but it's still pretty cool. The very first track, On Earth, is great. Mr. California is good. Uh, they have a couple of instrumentals on here, like Axe, which I weirdly enjoy. And I was surprised to find a physical copy of this album for a buck. So it was something I had to get. This may or may not end up on an episode of Rare and Hard to Find CDs. I have to do some research on it, but until then, check this album out if you haven't yet. Next up in the bag here, oh look at that, uh, TV on the radio's Return to Cookie Mountain. I used to own a copy of this a long, long time ago, and then I got rid of it partly because I hadn't really listened to it much and I thought, I really don't need this, I don't think I'm gonna listen to it. But then while we were in quarantine, I re-listened to the album and thought, oh wow, this sounds insane, and I love the production, I love how interesting and weird and heavy it is, so I guess I should just go buy another copy. I could have bought one on Discogs or Amazon or whatever, but I figured I'd wait until Amoeba reopened to get a copy because I knew I could get it for ridiculously cheap. And I'm glad I did, because I only spent $2.99 on this. And it looks like this might be a remastered version, a deluxe edition, I can't tell, but there's some bonus tracks on here that I don't think were on the original edition I had. Just a quick update, I am in the process of editing this video, and I looked this album up, and it turns out that, uh, let's zoom in there, those uh, bonus tracks are just US bonus tracks, so it's not like a deluxe edition or remastered edition or anything, just, uh, just the US release. I don't know, but it's a really, really cool record. This might be my gateway into checking out other TV on the radio albums. We'll have to see. Next up from the bag here. Okay, uh, I have Who's Afraid of the Art of Noise by The Art of Noise? This band goes way, way back for me. My parents used to play the song Moments in Love all the time when I was a kid, and I really didn't think anything of the song. I just thought it was some kind of weird electronic new age song that they both really liked. But then I figured out later on that it was by this band, The Art of Noise, and I was sampling some of the stuff off this album and found that it's pretty out there. It's poppy, but it's also kind of avant-garde. It's just very strange sounding. So I figured it's $2.99. I like what I'm hearing off of this, and it's got a song that I have used to listen to as a kid. Let's go. Let's check it out. Hopefully the rest of the album sounds just as good as that song. We will have to see. Next up in the bag here, I have New Order's Get Ready. This is one of New Order's later releases, and it was sort of a step away from the electronic alternative dance stuff they were doing, and more into just a straightforward alternative rock sound. I remember the song 60 Miles an Hour coming on at work one time, and I really, really liked it. I loved how melodic it was, and in a way, it reminded me a lot of the Dandy Warhols. But it was shocking to see that it was New Order, because I didn't think the band was doing music like that. So, for $2.99, I decided let's see the rest of the album. If it's just as good as 60 miles an hour, then I'm sure I will like it. Next 
next up in the bag here, I have a Beatles compilation. You can't leave a record store without a Beatles album. This is the Past Masters Volume 1 and 2 in one packaging. I own the second volume of this, and I bought it specifically for the song Rain. It's like this weird B-side track that kind of sounds like it's proto shoegaze, but also volume two had a bunch of other songs that I didn't have in the collection, like Day Tripper, We Can Work It Out, uh, Let It Be. But this guy not only has volume two remastered, it also has the first volume, which has even more stuff I don't have. Love Me Do, She Loves You, From Me To You, just the classics. I don't know if I'm going to be able to play any of their music in this video when I edit it. It'll probably be taken down for copyright reasons, but it's the Beatles. They're classic stuff. They're essential. And uh, this collection I'm excited to have in my collection. Next up in the bag here, I have a Massive Attack album. I have the album Heliogland. This is the second Massive Attack album I ever listened to. The first one being Mezzazine. At the time I discovered Massive Attack, this album was fresh. It had just been released. And the song Paradise Circus was the big hit off of it. I didn't know anything about the band, nor who was involved with it, but I liked the song, so I ended up buying the album digitally. But after re-listening to this album and seeing the people involved, I was needing a copy of it in my collection. Damon Alburn is featured on a song on here. Uh, the singer on Paradise Circus is actually the singer from Mazzy Star, which blew my mind. And there's also just some great songs on here. Saturday Comes Slow, Atlas Air, Rush Minutes. It's a solid album. When I was at Amoeba, this was the only copy they had in their inventory, and I was glad I was able to swipe it. It's been a long time coming getting this album, and I'm finally happy to add it to my CD collection here. Look at her with her eyes like a flame She will love you like a fly Next up in the bag here, I have A Charlie Brown Christmas by Vince Guaraldi. Again, technically already owned this album, but I have the original edition. This edition is the same album remastered along with two bonus tracks. The first one being The Great Pumpkin Waltz, which was featured in The Great Pumpkin. It's The Great Pumpkin! He's rising up out of the pumpkin patch! And the second being the Thanksgiving theme, which is featured in A Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. Where's the turkey, Chuck? Don't you know anything about Thanksgiving dinners? This is an album I put on all the time when the holidays come around. And I know that's pretty cliche, but this album means so much to me. My dad used to play this all the time when we were kids, when Christmas comes around. And it just gets me in the Christmas spirit. Unfortunately, I don't really get in the Christmas spirit much as an adult just because I'm so preoccupied with work and paying bills. And this time around with COVID being here, I don't know how I'm gonna get in the right mindset, but I think this one will help. So this album, so happy to have, it means a lot. And I'm glad I have the edition with two additional tracks on it. Next album I have in the bag here, I have Tom Petty's Highway Companion. Little known fact about this album, the very first song, Saving Grace, was the very first Tom Petty song I had ever listened to. I remember my dad buying this album on iTunes and playing the first song, and I just thought it was so cool. And I was also learning how to play the bass at that time, and in the beginning of the song, it starts with just guitar, vocal, and a little percussion before it kicks in with the bass. And that was sort of like my introduction of what music sounds like without bass and with bass. And I think at some point I actually bought this full album digitally, but I don't remember anything off of it. I only remember that one song. So I bought the CD specifically for Saving Grace, but also because I wanted to re-listen to the rest of the album. I hope it's is as good. You keep running for another place to find that saving grace. Don't you, baby? Next up in the bag here, we're getting getting close to the end. Uh, I have the 
Flowers of Romance by Pill. This band is legendary, and this is one of their legendary releases. And unfortunately, I actually haven't listened to much of their material. I remember seeing this cover a lot when I was first going to Amoeba and thinking it was so cool and freaky looking, but I had no idea what the stuff sounded like. Since then, I've listened to it a little bit, mostly the first couple tracks, and it sounds just as weird as the cover looks. From what I understand, this was the first album where the band just decided to really go hard with being abstract and being experimental. So I'm gonna consider this album my proper introduction to the band. I will probably check out some of their other material after listening to this, we will have to see. Okay, we're down to the final three here. The next album I have, I have Dialects from Filthy Tongue of Gods and Griots. Dialect is this amazing experimental hip hop group that incorporates elements of industrial, noise, trip hop, and in some cases, shoegaze. I have been looking for something by this group for the longest time, and I was so excited to see that Amoeba had something by them today. And it was only $2.99, that's a steal. I'm hoping to find a copy of the album that came after this one because I like that one just a little bit better, but this one, this one's good too. Misunderstood, misguided, maniac, lack the social skills, it will defeat your mold. I told you kind before, not to expect the world from out who hates the world. I burn your flag and furl. The next album I have here is technically a box set. I have Korn's Untitled Album. Some of you might be thinking, Korn? Really? Of all bands, you bought a Korn album? But yes, uh, I did, and I love this album quite a bit, actually. This album is so weird in comparison to their classic new metal stuff from the 90s. By the time they were recording this, the band was down to three members, and they were commissioning a bunch of other people, mostly drummers, to come into the studio to drum for them. In fact, I think Jonathan Davis was doing some drumming on some of these songs. But anyways, it sounds pretty similar to their earlier material, but they incorporate a little bit more industrial to the music. It's a lot darker sounding production-wise and sonically, and I think that darkness comes from Atticus Ross, who was the producer on this album. Someone I didn't think I would ever see producing a Korn record. And it's got some of my favorite Korn songs on here. Hold On is great, Kiss I used to listen to all the time when I was an angsty teenager, and Starting Over is a killer song. And I think this box set edition features a bonus track that was not featured on the original release. As you know, I'm a sucker for bonus content, so I I couldn't help myself to look for this particular edition, and it was only $10, so I mean, $10 for a box set, that's a pretty good deal. So I'm really excited to finally own a physical version of this album. I've been listening to it for years now, but haven't gotten a copy until now, so this is, this is awesome. It's starting over, it's starting over. And the final album I have in the bag here, I have an album by, forgive me for mispronouncing your name, I'm sorry, Lucretia Dalt, and this is her album, Anticlines. This is a weird experimental record I actually discovered a few days before Amoeba actually opened up. She just recently released a new record, and I remember seeing the cover for the new record on the iTunes new releases section and thought it was kind of peculiar looking. So I sampled that and I thought it was interesting and weird sounding, and so I checked out the rest of her material and found this record. And it's not like this album really has anything conventional going for it. It's just very minimal music concrete sounding material, but there was something about it that just connected with me. So on a whim, I threw it on my grocery list to look for while I was at Amoeba, and I was shocked to find a copy of it in their experimental section. But I'm also really excited because I loved the material I had sampled, and I'm really excited to actually give this album a full listen. And also, it's just, it's experimental music. I had to buy at least one experimental record while at Amoeba, and this one, this was it. Thank you. 
Alrighty then, internet, that does it for me. Hey, if you have any bands or albums you want me to check out, leave a comment down below, and if I like it, maybe I'll feature it in another episode. Maybe I'll go look for it at Amoeba now that it's open. If you also like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It'll show me the support and I'll love your face for it. And you can also follow me on Instagram for even more music. I post a new album on there semi-frequently, talk a little bit about it, and it gives you a bit of an insight of what else is in my collection. So, thank you all very much for watching. This is Olin from What I'm Listening To, signing out. Goodbye.